Everyone loves a good story, from the Iliad to Lord of the Rings. The stories we tell have captured our imaginations for millennia and served as ways to express our humanity. But when did we start telling them? The discovery of the world's oldest known art, hidden deep in a cave in Indonesia, might hold the key. What can this cave art tell us about not only our capacity for storytelling, but our development as human beings? The world's oldest art discovered in caves in Indonesia is rewriting what we know about human cognition. Human-animal hybrids hunting extinct animals mysteriously coat the walls deep in a remote cave. It's a stunning, priceless find. Who were these people? Why were they compelled to create this almost psychedelic artwork? And how did people who lived nearly 50,000 years ago even have the mental capacity to make it? Sulawesi Rewriting History A series of discoveries in Sulawesi, Indonesia between 2017 and 2019 has revealed cave art that is at least 45,000 years old, older than any other cave art found to date. The find is extra exciting because prior to Sulawesi, archaeologists thought that all the oldest cave art was located in Western Europe. Astonishingly, the artwork is 5 to 10,000 years older than any of the oldest paintings found in caves across Spain and France. The fact that such ancient art exists in Indonesia has led to the startling realization that complex thought and expression, the building blocks for spirituality and religion, didn't develop in the West first and then spread East. Instead, spirituality and religion may have spread the other way around or else emerged from multiple places at once and far earlier than previously thought. There are two cave art sites in Sulawesi. The first in Liang Tedongne Cave is an image of three wild pigs. Two of the pigs appear to be fighting, but the images are almost completely deteriorated. By radiocarbon dating the calcium buildup over the red ochre pigment used as paint, scientists estimate the pigs were drawn 45,000 years ago. However, the red ochre itself can be dated, so it's possible the paintings are even older. Adam Broom, an archaeologist who was part of the team that discovered the site, said he was struck dumb by the find and noted that it may constitute the most ancient figurative artwork known to archaeology. For the less artistically inclined, figurative art just means drawing what you see. For example, if you were to see a tree, you are to draw a tree. There are many instances of early figurative cave art around the world. That the art in Liang Tedongue Cave is the oldest example found so far. But what they discovered in the other cave nearby is even more extraordinary. Half Man, Half Beast, The Birth of Symbolic Thought the second cave named Liang Bulu Sipong is home to the world's oldest recorded story. It depicts a hunting scene. A group of people carrying what appear to be weapons and ropes surrounds a group of animals, which includes pigs and a species of dwarf buffalo. The same radiocarbon dating technique revealed that this artwork is 44,000 years old, nearly as old as the pig painted in the neighboring cave. It could be considered figurative arts, a literal narration of a hunt except for one thing. The individuals painted are hybrids of people and animals. One has an elongated snout, another has a bird-like beak, and another has a tail. These images are far from figurative. They represent our capacity to imagine things that don't exist in nature, to think symbolically, and to tell stories. This was a monumental development for our species. Narratives allow us to reach beyond the limits of our lives, to convey an experience without the actual physical risk that accompanies the experience. A risk like hunting a buffalo, for example. But pairing narrative with human-animal hybrids is the stuff of mythology. It's what religions are born from. The cave art at Sulawesi is remarkable because it is evidence that humans have been doing this for far longer than we thought. The technical term for a human-animal hybrid is therianthrope. There are many examples of them throughout ancient and modern history. Werewolves, Medusa, Minotaurs, and the Egyptian god Anubis are all therianthropes. The list can go on and on. Before Sulawesi, the oldest known therianthropic representation was a sculpture known as the Lion Man. It was discovered in 1939 in Stadelhole Cave in southwest Germany. Carved from mammoth ivory, the one-foot-tall statuette has the body of a man and the head of a lion. 
It was found along with several other lion-headed carvings at the site, which has led archaeologists to speculate that the big cats had a spiritual, maybe totemic significance for the people in the region. At 38,000 years old, it is the oldest Therianthropic statue ever found. Then there is Lascaux Cave in southwestern France, dubbed the Sistine Chapel of Prehistory. Because of the beauty of the paintings inside, Lascaux's artwork is a mix of both figurative and therianthropic imagery. One of the most well-known images is the Birdman, a long lanky human body with the head of a bird. Also in France, the sorcerer blends a few different animals together and attaches them to a single human figure. The cave art in Sulawesi is more than twice as old as either the Birdman or the Sorcerer. Why Cave Art? The discovery at Sulawesi definitely pushes back our understanding of how human cognition developed, but we're still not sure when exactly this capacity to create things like therianthropes and narratives first started. It could have started with spoken language, but no one really knows when people first began talking. Anatomically modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, entered the fossil record around 300,000 years ago. Even then, we had all the right equipment for speech, but it remains a mystery whether or not we were communicating complex ideas, or had the ability to tell stories and imagine mythical creatures like Birdman. Sound doesn't leave a very traceable history. That is, it didn't until we invented recording devices. Unfortunately, recording didn't exist 45,000 years ago, so we really have no idea how our ancient ancestors communicated, or what they talked about before they started painting the insides of caves. So why caves? Why did so many prehistoric cultures feel compelled to line the walls of these deep, dark caverns? Part of the reason may be that they provided shelter in the cold climates of Western Europe particularly during the Younger Dryas, a period of colder temperatures between 13,000 and 11,700 years ago, also known as the Little Ice Age. The refuge that caves provided was a key part of the survival of our species in many regions, which may have made them ground zero for our evolution towards symbolic thought. However, symbolic thought probably developed long before the Younger Dryas. Evidence from Africa suggests it developed long before the Sulawesi cave art as well. In 2018, archaeologists made a stunning discovery. Fragments of stone in Bolombo's cave, South Africa, had abstract geometrical patterns drawn on them in red ochre. They were dated to over 70,000 years old. The find has led many to speculate that symbolic thought first developed in Africa and then spread elsewhere, mirroring the physical migration of humans. Archaeoacoustics. So the question remains, why caves? A recent theory that merges sound, archaeology, linguistics, and evolutionary biology also offers some compelling insights into why early humans were so enamored by caves. Researchers studying archaeoacoustics have come up with the idea that cave paintings are deeply connected to the acoustic nature of cave chambers. Paintings are often tucked deep into the hard-to-reach areas of many caves, and often just painted in one location, when there is plenty of extra wall space available. This has led experts to believe there could be a connection between the subject matter of the paintings and the acoustic property of the caves. For example, in Lascaux and Fontegum caves in France, hoofed animals like bulls and bison are painted in chambers, which have a percussive echo that resembles the sounds of hoofbeats. In other chambers that are more muffled, there are images of big cats, quieter animals for quieter chambers. When analyzed from the perspective of archaeoacoustics, cave art is essentially the transfer of external information from auditory to visual. Hearing a clap of thunder or the echo of hoofbeats, and then translating the sound into a visual image. It's a transfer that reflects a fundamental advance in human capacity for symbolic thought. The technical term for this phenomenon is cross-modality information transfer. The ability to take sounds and language and transfer them into imagery could have had some kind of evolutionary advantage. Proponents of the cross-modality information transfer theory have speculated that the special few who figured out how to do it were held in high esteem and could have had higher rates of reproductive success spreading their cognitive abilities throughout early human populations in Africa.
Could the mysteries of human consciousness be revealed through these ancient cave paintings? There are still many unanswered questions when it comes to cave art and what it could tell us about the evolution of our species. But who knows, maybe there are more hidden clues in the dark recesses of our ancient history.